More French accent, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're here for the big idea is to bring back music and art where they all belong. In that long forgotten and neglected venue. It's where it all started. The living room. <laughs> In your own living room. So here's how it all starts. Here's the journey. Yeah, we have to go back a little bit. So it's 1986, and I'm finishing my bachelor's in music. Yes, I'm preserved very well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, in any ways, I, I had already been conducting for three years and done big bands. I love big band music, and uh, I've played, I had played in big bands for like seven years at that point. And uh, I heard of an opening for a position as a conductor for jazz ensemble at McGill University. So I said, well, of course, I'm going to audition. You know? <laughs> so uh, there was about three, uh, 30 uh, applicants for that, that post, and all magnificently qualified, more qualified than me. And to make a long story short, I got the job. And so, yeah, thank you. So, uh, the but <laughs> the reason I'm telling you this is because you know, we always, you know, we're told to learn from our failures, and that's very important. But you also have to learn from your unexpected successes. And I learned an important lesson that day that's still with me today, and that is confidence and fearlessness. You see, I think that in my blissful ignorance, um, I was completely unaware of the you know, prestige of the post and the importance of that, what it would have in my life and all that stuff. I just went there to have fun. We had 30 minutes to rehearse the band, and then a jury of a panel of, of uh, fancy looking doctors and things, and uh, <laughs> in any case, uh, so I was very, very well prepared, of course, because I wanted to sound, the, the band sound as good as possible, but I was completely fearless. And I know that in, in many people's minds, uh, uh, confidence and fearlessness are one and the same, but in my mind, they're not. You earn confidence. We perform every day. If you're a teacher, a lawyer, we're always performing. And to perform at your peak, you should have both confidence and fearlessness and you know you practice you prepare if you're an athlete you train you know what you can do so that's confidence you earn that fearlessness is a figment of your imagination you make that up it's a state of mind and that's something that you can you know like I said I was blissfully unaware I was young but then I grew older and I became a little bit more aware but I was still able to duplicate that feeling or that that state of fearlessness in my subsequent adventures and uh, which were, <laughs> so essentially what happened in the next 12 years is I ended up having a pretty successful freelance career in Montreal, where we're from. And uh, I was doing studio work, film work, um, uh, touring, teaching, of course, and uh, touring, and then a little bit more touring, and, and it became more and more um, where I was traveling all the time. And at the time, uh, Hélène was at home with a very busy piano studio, and then one, two, and then three children, <laughs> not at the same time, one after the other. And uh, so it's in 1998 when Cirque du Soleil called me, and they said, well, we want you to transplant your family, go to Orlando. Uh, I said yes. So that's Fearless. How Fearless. So here we are, leaving a vivid vibrant city with art venues every day of the week. We're exiled to a small town <laughs> in another country. No more students, three little kids, a second language to learn, no music on his nights off. Nothing was happening 13 years ago, nothing was happening in that little town. So, we decided to have our own concerts in our living room. Fearless. <laughs> our first concerts, um, our first concerts, oh my. <laughs> we um, made our own posters. Benoit wrote the music. We uh, pulled sleeves for musicians to come and play. We made phone calls to friends, the little friends that we made, um, to ask them to come and listen to the concert, and I provided the wine and cheese. <laughs> um, we bought a few wine glasses. Um, we had a magnetic 
sign made for the car so that we could leave the car at the entrance, neighborhood entrance, so that the neighbor would know about it. And I took the seven, six, and three-year-old with me around the lake, knocking at doors, passing flyers. Um, we, we did uh, um, everything we could to have people at our concerts. So um, after a year or so, we ended up hosting our concerts every month. We added um, visual arts to our events. So we had paintings or sculpting, um, a little more wine glasses to buy. Uh, then we added the folding chairs so that we can store them away. Um, and then we started tearing walls down. So a little wall and then the whole wall. And uh, so we changed the acoustic of the whole room. We wanted, um, it, it just turned great. And then the people were coming uh, with a better experience. And one night, we had a Brazilian night. It's a lovely community. And the crowd overflowed to the patio, to the backyard. And the next day, there was a wine glass all the way around the lake. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think that was our clue to start designing and building our new home. Which we did. And uh, so uh, the new house, we went from a, a living room of what, 12 by 18, to a living room of 21 by 45. That's three stories high. So we got balconies. And uh, with the acoustics, we got lucky. The acoustics are amazing in the room. Uh, we have a stage, lights, a recording studio, four HD cameras, some top-notch microphones, piano, drums, bass, guitar, uh, all kinds of instruments, essentially trying to make it very easy for musicians from near and far to come and play at the house so they don't have to bring gear, essentially. We have double bass, everything. And uh, the place is built like a bunker with walls, concrete walls, like this thick, inside and out. With <laughs> and uh, 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 hurricane laminate windows, all of that to soundproof the house. And because, you know, it's important. We don't want to aggravate the neighbors, and we don't want the neighbors to aggravate us. <laughs> and so <laughs> the place is very, very well They're soundproof. They're always invited. Yeah, of course, of course. So it, it's a very green house. It's um, a house that is double the size that of the house that we had before, but the utility bills are lower. So it's very efficient. Um, and the concerts now, uh, well, we have... Um, People bring their own beverages and food, so it's a very communal thing. We're roasting about 100 and 150 people every night. So I, I couldn't provide wine and cheese for everybody. <laughs> but the dishes we discovered through that... Yeah, that's very cool. Um, we host concerts now two to three times a month. We've had over 300 world premieres, so which makes... Uh, because we've always emphasized living composers and new music which makes our house, our living room, one of the busiest venues in the southeast for new music. So it's very... <laughs> yes, yes. We added live visual arts. So another fearlessness moment when we have uh, artists that are more than willing, one artist just presented himself and asked if he could paint live. Yes. So now it's a tradition. <laughs> so Everybody paints live. 80% we have. We don't call musicians anymore. We, people call us. And uh, we are booked like six months ahead of time. I do not make phone calls. We have now an email list, 750 names strong. We have had musicians from Britain, Japan, Israel, US, all over the US, uh, Germany, Canada, France, Brazil, India, Bolivia, Russia, Poland, Sweden, Colombia, Holland, and New Zealand. We've had Grammy winners, Gramophone winners, Pulitzer winners, and even a Nobel-nominated poet. And this did not happen on its own. It happens with great collaborators. And some of them are the Civic Minded Five, the Orlando Brass Festival, the Jack Kerouac Project, um, the um, Atlantic, Center, Atlantic for the Center for the Arts, and the Accidental Music Festival also. All the university of the area. And uh, for the past decade, the kids have opened the concert, most concerts, and they still do. Uh, whatever style of music that's being played that night, we try to do something in that style. And so they've learned many styles of music and many instruments, and they have their own fan club now. Yes, they do. Um, 
we are providing also those concerts, the musicians are playing for free. So we're providing them now with a professional DVD of their evening. And uh, it's not, the musicians are performing for free, but the concerts are free. So it's free. We just host a concert. You just come and listen. And we, are, uh, we have a nonprofit now that's 100% privately funded, no grants from corporations or governments. Uh, we have, thank you. <laughs> and we have a wonderful board of volunteers and all kinds of people who help us, even building the house. We had uh, you know, a Brazilian friend of ours help us with the tile uh, and the fancy uh, uh, Brazilian granite, all that kind of things. And so it's been a very, very, very cool experience for everybody. Yes, so if you're still wondering why we do it, why do we well, do it? Well, why do we do it? <laughs> Well, it forced me to write a lot of music, um, if only for our opening act. Um, it, it's very good for the kids. I mean, they've had to learn all these things. It's good family time, too, learning this music, you know? Um, and I think we've created a very tight-knit community uh, that's uh, I local and international. Um, he we've goes out. He goes out to work every night, and I was at home. <laughs> I was at home with a very small circle. This just opened me to the world. It, it just brought a quality of friendship that I can't qualify. Um, I would not change it for the world. And we've made musicians friends from all over the world, as you heard before. And uh, come on, we, we have live art and live music in our living room. <laughs> and people ask us all the time how we do it. Yeah. We just open the doors and then magic happens. Exactly. So we hope our small idea has inspired you to maybe start your concerts in your living room. Yes, to use your living room in a whole new way. That's it. Thanks. <laughs> now, <laughs> since we have a little bit of time still. We'd like to invite the kids to come and uh, open the evening for us. We have Charles. Charles uh, is 17. Camille is 16. And uh, uh, Jean-Marie is 13. Someday, someday. 